since this global, the terror is global, is it possible that if we just deconstruct the facade around even just one issue, then we can access the global terror and then if we just then, once we access it, like try to focus on that, that that could sort of be like a quicker way? Yeah, it's an interesting question, Kate, because, because what's probably going to happen in practice for the majority of you is you're going to have to substantially uh, deconstruct your addictions before you're going to be able to access your global terror because your addictions are your primary method of avoiding your global terror. So, so while you continue to engage your addictions, it's very hard to access global terror. You have to actually go through a process of deconstructing your addictions quite strongly first before you'll access the global terror, the governing emotion of terror. So, so the majori for the majority of you, while, it, while in theory you could just deal with this and everything would be gone, in practice you've got a whole heap of addictions in play which are automatic. Mm. And these automatic addictions which help prevent your global experience this, um, of this global terror, the emotion of terror, and those addictions are the, the addictions you need to focus your attention on. Now, many of you have quite a large number of addictions associated with that terror. Does that make sense? So, uh, for, uh, for example, the addiction to food mm. is actually an addiction associated with the terror. The addiction to sweets, the addiction, uh, addictions to... And, and when I say addiction to alcohol, I'm not talking about where you get drunk, I'm just talking about needing a drink. The feeling of needing a drink to calm down. Is an, is, a, is an addiction that covers over that particular feeling from physical addictions. And then for some of you it's sex, for some of you drugs, for some of you uh, medicated, medical, medically um, prescribed drugs um, help avoid this terror. For, for others um, it's being busy, doing things. But many of you are addicted to noise. You're addicted to noise as a way of not feeling terror. So when you're driving in the car, you've got to have the radio on. If you're at home, you've got to have some music on or telly on. You've got to be talking. You can't have time where you're just sitting there not, feel, you know, not hearing anything. You've got to have something on. It's a way of distracting you from your feelings. And, and you use that as a method. Some of our methods are insidiously minor. In, that's what they look like, you know, they, they think, oh, it's just something I like, but it's actually something you're doing to avoid terror. So in, in practice, unless you address many of your addictions, it's highly unlikely you'll get to expose the terror that's underneath them. Yeah. So, uh, so the real course of action for the majority of you is going to need to be a very sincere desire to deconstruct addictions, very sincere desire, because the addictions cover over the terror. They suppress it. They help you avoid it. Right? So unless you address those addictions, you'll always finish up reverting to the addiction every time there's even a smidge of terror. You, you revert to the addiction every time. Now, once you've deconstructed a lot of your addictions, you'll get to the point where your terror is there all the time. It's a very uncomfortable place. Very uncomfortable. Most of you in that place, you, you will sort of be beside yourself in a way. It's sort of almost like, I've got to do something, I've got to do something, what can I do? And then you know, I've taken that away, I've taken that away, I no longer do this, I no longer do that, but what can I do? I need to do something. And, and you, you drive yourself a bit batty in that place. right? And that's still an indication that there's no desire to feel the terror yet. So you're now touching it as a, you know, it's like... Because <laughs> your terror feels like that, it's like Bernie hot, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. And, that, and that's, that's as far as you'll go. But, but unless you get rid of your addictions, unless you deconstruct your addictions, you won't even get to do that. Your addictions are masking the terror. And remember, you've got physical, emotional and spiritual addictions. So let's. So a physical addiction might be food, sweet food, chocolate. You know those kind of things. Many women chocolate. 
necessity in your life, right? So, so you know, it's an addiction to cover over this coffee, another addiction. Like coffee is an interesting addiction because it actually makes you feel like in control while at the same time triggering body responses that actually for a normal person would send them into hyper overdrive. Uh, it's really interesting sort of a, addiction coffee, a fear-based addiction. That's why in the Western world it's becoming one of the most popular drinks. It's an, it's an allowable fear-based addiction suppressor. So then you go to emotional addictions. These are the kinds of addictions like that you have with men or with women or in situations or just even emotional addiction where you know you've got to you know something that seems um, quite innocent as an emotional transaction with another person. So just needing somebody's reassurance every time that you do something is an emotional addiction that covers over terror. Feeling like you need their approval once you've done it is another emotional addiction that covers over terror. So there's an example of emotional addiction. And then with spiritual addictions you've got things like a belief system based upon what you believe love to be. So, so for example, I believe love is a give and take. That's a spiritual addiction. Love's not a give and take, it's just a give. <laughs> it's actually a gift. It's not a take. If I believe it's a take, or taking is involved, or a barter is involved in love, then, I, then I'm engaging love as a spiritual, uh, evil as a spiritual addiction. Evil, remember, the opposite, the reverse of love. So, so we're engaging the spiritual addiction there. Another spiritual addiction is belief systems, like reincarnation is a spiritual addiction. So it's the addiction, view, view, addictive viewpoint saying that when you get to the spirit state, that you'll automatically know everything and understand everything. That's what you want to believe. It's not true. You'll know exactly what you know the moment you passed. And one more thing per perhaps, and that is that you've passed. And many don't even know that for a few years after they've passed. Right? So the reality is that you know, some, many of our spiritual addictions, our belief systems are governed. The whole addiction to believe in sa somebody sacrificing as a view of love. So if somebody sacrificed for you, isn't it so wonderful you sacrifice for me? That's a terrible, terrible addiction. Love doesn't sacrifice oneself for another. Right? It doesn't do that. It, it, it loves both equally. Right? So, so that's an addiction. Addiction to believe in those kind of belief systems is spiritual addiction. That spiritual addiction covers over terror of some kind of you know, of why do we want to believe that? Well, because I, I want to believe that if you sacrifice yourself for me, then, then you love me and you care for me. And Why do I want to believe that? Because, because it, for a lot of us, it's the only way that we love, by sacrificing ourselves for others. And, we, and you take that away from us, and, and basically we're taking away most of what we think is loving inside of us. So it's going to be a major terror associated with that. So that are just some examples. I could give more, Kate, but these examples are physical, emotional, spiritual addictions, which, when unsatisfied, create anger and rage. When satisfied, create so-called feeling of comfort and satisfaction. Unless you address those, and even the capping things on top of that, which is the denial altogether, unless you address those particular things, it's highly unlikely you're ever going to even touch the terror, let alone feel it. And you really want it, I know it sounds really strange, but you really want to get to touch it, at least. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, I know it sounds strange, it, it feels almost like the opposite of what, you know, you should do. And, and this is the thing with a lot of progression on, on the way that God's design, it's the opposite of what mankind tells you you should have done or should do. So mankind tells you, you suppress terror at all costs. You do whatever you can. You kill to suppress your terror. You do whatever you can to suppress terror. You do whatever is needed, drugs, alcohol, so physical substances, emotions, and also spiritual addictions. Create whole belief systems that you live your whole life by. You do all of that 
to that's man's way. God's way is no, you do the opposite to that. You want to get to touch and then feel the terror that exists within you.